Hello and welcome to History 391. This week it's another kind of short video and just the one video for the week to talk a little bit about um, the sources that are, that are set up for this week and to kind of uh, foreshadow a little bit how this factors into work later on. If you remember, and I understand if you don't, I know you're all very busy, the third paper is now effectively um, a paper aimed at discussing, you know, um, uh, one of these films. Now, it's not a film review. You're going to be asked to kind of place uh, one of these films in the context of how we talk about the American War in Vietnam. So in anticipation of that, um, I just want to give you a little bit of a primer into how I would encourage you to approach these three films. Maybe talk a little bit about why I chose them. So first, Apocalypse Now. I chose Apocalypse Now because I think it's a fantastic film. Um, but also because it's one of the most famous um, films made in, by, by an American artist um, about the Vietnam War. It is uh, kind of a legendary film in many ways. Francis Coppola, the man who made the film, is an interesting character um, who kind of spent lots of his career kind of, uh, you know, going bankrupt to make visions and then making money through making something kind of terrible and then making a visionary film again. Apocalypse Now is an example of this. He goes massively into personal debt to make it. There's lots of stories about, you know, they had to pause filming on certain days because the helicopters the Filipino government had given them to use were flying away uh, to be used to fight rebels and they couldn't film that day. Um, Martin Sheen, who uh, plays the, uh, the protagonist, the main protagonist of the film, uh, who was still in his 30s, had a heart attack on set as part of a broader nervous collapse that was in part brought on by Coppola driving him to kind of embrace the darkness of the role. It's a fascinating, very interesting film. It's also based on Heart of Darkness, the novella by Joseph Conrad, um, a very famous piece of uh, literature and a book that at this point already in the 1970s has already become quite controversial. Um, Chino Achebe, the famous Nigerian author, has called had called Heart of Darkness, you know, Howard called Joseph Conrad, rather, a bloody racist based on um, his novel, Heart of Darkness. So you, you don't need to have read Heart of Darkness I, to, to understand Apocalypse Now and to kind of engage with it. Certainly, if you have read Heart of Darkness, I think you get a lot out of this particular film. The central premise of Apocalypse Now is that um, Willard, uh, who it would be Marlowe in the original novel, Willard, who's played by Martin Sheen, is traveling inland into Vietnam and into Cambodia to find Kurtz, played by Marlon Brando, who was kind of, he was this best of the best figure who's now been lost. And there's um, a lot of metaphorical um, allusions going on in Apocalypse Now. And in many ways, it kind of picks up the legacies of the novel on which it's based. Um, Heart of Darkness, whatever way you want to criticize it today, was written as a critique of imperialism. And it's very much what Coppola is seeking to do. There's also a broader sense um, a broader attempt to narrativize here the extent to which, um, you know, did America lose itself in Vietnam? Now, there's lots of interesting things I'd like you to think about as you watch through this. Um, how do we understand Vietnam in this film? To what extent is Vietnam, Vietnam anything more than simply a backdrop? Is that too harsh a take on this? Um, I think Coppola is telling an American story. And how does America, fit, how does Vietnam rather fit into that American story? Similarly, going on to The Deer Hunter, Michael Cimino makes this movie, The Deer Hunter, in the 1970s, which is this, is a masterpiece. It makes Cimino this huge star. Um, he later goes on to make this movie, Heaven's Gate, which is this massive, sprawling film that cost a huge amount of money to make and was such a massive financial failure, commercial failure, I should say. Um, he was never, he was basically never trusted with the keys to a major film ever again. But The Deer Hunter was his masterpiece. And The Deer Hunter is a fascinating film. Um, I think that although there are definitely similarities with Apocalypse Now, it's doing things in a very, very different way. The opening of the film, the first like 40 minutes, is basically a depiction and description of these Pennsylvania men from a very specific type of working class background in industrial Pennsylvania, the kind of, you know, um, the kind of um, what later sadly becomes the Rust Belt, um, kind of, you know, this idea of declining manufacturing. But the, the film kind of opens with these Russian Americans who are, you know, they're kind of the ideal in many ways, right? They're the children of immigrants or, the, you know, the, yeah, they're the children of immigrants. They, they work in manufacturing jobs and they answer the call when it comes. They go, they go to serve in the military. And there's this moment early in the film, they're at a wedding and there's a, there's a veteran at the bar and he reacts very negatively and they get very upset with him. And so there's this sense they're reflecting this kind of true American ideal. And as the film goes on, the three men all suffer in very, very different ways and become changed in very different ways. Um, one of the more famous examples of this is probably the Christopher Walken character uh, who goes through this kind of um, 
you know, effectively enters this kind of psychosis. And, you know, there's big questions here, you know, to what extent is the deer hunter making clear allusions to you know, what's happening to Christopher Walken is happening to America. And and there's a very artistic kind of statement being made there in the sense of like, uh, you know, the sense which America has lost itself metaphorically. And this is being personified in the character, in, in, in Walken's character and in Savage's character and in Robert De Niro's character. Apocalypse Now and The Deer Hunter both fit into and also helped to feed this very clear, you know, late, late 70s going to early 1980s narrative of the Vietnam War as an unmitigated failure and a disaster, and not just a military disaster, but a moral disaster to the United States. We Were Soldiers is fascinating, a fascinating counter to that. I should clarify, um, cinematically, artistically, We Were Soldiers would not be considered even remotely in the same league as Apocalypse Now and The Deer Hunter. And this is not because of the stance it takes in the Vietnam War, it's just it's just not as good a film. I do think it's an interesting war film though and it's one of the few examples of an attempt to take the Vietnam War and kind of take a story out of it and so uh, I, I rather take a positive story out of it and so in theory um, We Were Soldiers has much more in common with The Ballad of the Green Beret we looked at a couple of weeks ago or kind of early John Wayne movies. There's this early John Wayne attempt to make the Vietnam War movie, which completely falls flat. Um, but here we are, um, you know, later on, turn, going into the 21st century, and Mel Gibson is starring kind of as a, you know, the, the premise of the film is that, you know, he's the commanding officer, and he'll be the first guy to step off the helicopter and the last guy to step on to to leave. And, and, it's, and it's based on a true story of this, of this company that's ho- trying to hold out this hill um, for, you know, for, for broader policy. I think what's interesting about the film, and I'd like you to kind of pay attention to, is how much it seems to deliberately and consciously serve as a counter to the kind of messages we're seeing in the first two films, but the extent to which it still kind of has to acknowledge the reality of Vietnam as, you know, Vietnam was not World War II and Vietnam was not this kind of high and shining moment. Now, the discussion question for this week um, is a fairly clear one. I want you to take two of the three films, okay? Take two of them and just comment on how comment on the differences in their approach or the similarities in their approach to the american war in vietnam thanks for watching